and welcome back. Today we talk about macro, and specifically we talk about macro for beginners or enthusiasts that are just approaching macro. Why am I saying that? Because we're, today we're talking about the Meike 60mm f2.8. Now this is for uh, Sony E-mount, but they also make it for Fuji. It's an APS-C lens. They also make it for Fuji. I believe they make it for Nikon, and they make it for Micro Four Thirds. And being that this lens doesn't have any electronic contacts, let me show you. Uh, basically, whatever I'm saying for Sony, automatically tra translate exactly the same for Fuji, for Nikon, and all of that. So it's just it's all, it's an all manual uh, lens. Uh, that doesn't have any electronics in it. So whatever you get is optically uh, designed like that and there's no automatic cor correction. So keep that in mind. Also, this is a 140, 160, 120, I saw $120 of yours uh, during Black Friday. So it's a very inexpensive lens that is also built really well. But we're gonna talk about the build in a, in a, in a second. Uh, you will understand why I'm saying this is just a macro lens in a moment when we talk about uh, the, build, the build quality. But this is basically your um, entry-level uh, macro lens that gives you the one-to-one -one macro uh, ratio that m many of us look for when we start looking into, into, into macro. Now, of course, if macro is your main thing, is you're making money out, out of macro, you're probably not gonna buy this lens. You're gonna buy the bigger, better, autofocusing lens that costs six, seven, 10 times as much. That's why I'm saying this is a beginners or enthusiasts that are just approaching ma macro because it gives you uh, the macro uh, capabilities without spending too much and also with a learning factor that we're gonna discuss at the end of the video. Now, speaking of build quality, the lens is all made of metal with the only exception of this part over here where you have the uh, printed scale for the depth of field, but all the rest, the rings and all that, everything is metal, even the back is metal, and it's got a front ring, a front filter thread of 49 uh, millimeters. That means the lens itself is really compact, but being made of metal, it's not super lightweight. It, it's got some weight to it, which makes it feel very well built. It's a lens that gives you that feeling of being very well built. As I mentioned already, there's no contacts in the back, so everything that you get, it's optically, uh, it's 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 an optical performance. It's not uh, uh, electronically cor corrected. Uh, the manual focus ring is very nice. It's battery smooth but it's got an issue that we're gonna discuss, and the uh, aperture ring is on the top over here, and it goes from f2.8 to f22. Actually, it's opposite, from f2.8 to f22. Now, let's talk about the um, manual focus ring, because this is where I tell I tell you, I can tell you for sure that this is a macro lens, and just a macro lens. L let's give a look at this. So. Right now, we are focused at the minimum focusing distance, okay? And it gives you, you can see here, one-to-one -one, uh, macro re reproduction. Now, you have all of this travel from 17 centimeters, which is the minimum focusing distance, to one meter that it should be pretty much over here, okay? It's a very long travel. Now, from one meter to infinity, it's just like that. One meter, infinity. One meter, infinity. That means that it's super easy to manual focus when you're very close, when you're doing macro, and it becomes almost impossible to nail focus once you get past one meter just because the, 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 the travel is so small that you get to from one meter to infinity in a super quick way. So that tells you that this lens basically is made for macro and macro only. And you should use it as such because if you want to, let's just shoot a, a, a portrait with a lens like this, you can think it's a 60 millimeters f2.8. Why, why cannot I shoot a portrait? Well, good luck getting, getting the, the subject in focus. It's not gonna happen that, that easily. So again, in my opinion, because of the build, because of the way it's done, this is a, a macro lens and a macro lens only. And it's perfect when it comes to focal range, focal length for macro as well on APS-C. Uh, the other one thing that I that I wanted to mention is uh, the focusing the aperture ring that you see here at the top. 
It moves very smoothly, you see here, the aperture going opening and closing, but it does it without clicking. What that means is that you may find yourself sometimes trying to uh, focus and you have your finger in the wrong position and you also move your aperture ring. You got to think about it just because with the fact that it doesn't have any contact, it doesn't tell you, even in the camera screen, what aperture you, you're using. So you got to be careful. It's not, you're going to get used to it. It's not a big deal, but it's something you, you should be, you should be uh, taking into consideration while op operating this lens. The good thing, however, is that uh, manual focusing on macro is a breeze. Now, speaking of image quality, uh, I'm not going to do my usual review on image quality because, the, again, this lens is basically a macro lens and it doesn't make too much sense to shoot at a chart and see sharpness corner to corner, vignetting and all that. Usually, when you're shooting macro, you have your subject pretty um, centered in the frame and you want that part to be super sharp. And if the borders are not as sharp or there's some vignetting, it doesn't really matter too much. And this lens is very is very good at it because even from f2.8, the lens is very sharp in the center. Although you gotta think that f2.8 at the minimum focusing distance, your uh, depth of field is razor thin. So you may think you may start using this lens and start blaming the lens for not being sharp. Believe me, 99.9% .9 of the time is just that you missed focus. And it's super easy to miss focus because uh, Unless you're shooting a very static subject on a tripod where everything, you got your time to focus, you got your time to do everything. Uh, if, you're in the, if you're on the outside, you're shooting macro of insects, flowers, anything that there's a risk of moving. Or even worse, you're trying to do it hand handling uh, the camera, which sometimes you have to do just because the subject cannot be reached by placing the tripod the way you want. Well. Missing focus is super, super easy. And that's why you don't use this lens at f2.8 most. Of Actually, you don't use this lens almost never at f2.8 because you need, not because you uh, you need it for to get the sharpness out, out of the lens. You need more depth of field just because otherwise your subject is never gonna be in focus enough for you to be pleased with the image. So this lens, should be used between f5.6 and f11, uh, where it gets, you get the most out of it, you get the maximum sharpness, and also you get a little bit of degree of uh, depth of field. Uh, the closer, the closest, the aperture, the, uh, the better, up to f16, where you start seeing a little bit of um, uh, diffraction and an f 22 the, the diffraction destroys the image so you should you should avoid f22 you can use those lens up to f16 if you're shooting macro for the first time you probably uh, your tendency is going to be to go oh i want to go f2.8 i want to blur the crap out of this image i understand it but it's not the way you shoot macro you're gonna get very good depth of field effect even if you stop it down a bit f5.6 f8 just because you're going to be that close to your subject that the uh, depth of field is going to be razor thin anyways. So keep that in mind. Macro doesn't really need to be shot at f2.8. Other than that, this lens is performing really good. There's not much, actually, there's basically no chromatic aberration. Handles flare really good, although you most of the time you don't need it while you're shooting uh, macro. And as, a, as I mentioned already, this is a macro lens and you, you're going to be using it only for macro. And it's very, it's a very, very good macro lens. It gets you what you need. It gets you that sharpness straight up from the minimum fo focusing distance. And it keeps it up until f11, f16 throughout the range of the usable uh, manual focusing range. The bokeh is really nice. I did not expect it to be that nice because when you're talking about the super cheap lens, inexpensive lens, not cheap because it's well built, but when you're talking about an inexpensive lens, sometimes they have to cut corners here and there. In this case, areas out not in focus, so the bokeh are really nice. I did not expect it to be that good. This lens can be used for video, but it's got a dramatic uh, uh, focus breathing, so 
again, you can use it, but you got to be aware of the fact that it's um, that's going to get you a lot of focus breathing, which is kind of normal with macro lenses. I, I believe most of our macro lenses do do this. So in conclusion, with this lens, I would strongly recommend if you're looking to understand how macro photography works and you're on a budget, you just approaching uh, macro for, for photography, I definitely recommend you to uh, give a look at this lens because it's not expensive, it's fairly compact, although it's not super light, lightweight, and it is perfect to also learn the... Um, the challenges that comes with macro pho photography. Because if you go with an autofocus lens that costs you $1,000 just to try how macro photography works, uh, you will probably spend your money in, not in a wise way. Because at the end of the day, if you want to do real macro, most of the time you're going to be manual focusing even with autofocusing lenses. So start with this. Understand whether you like macro or not with a inexpensive lens, which is, however, capable of giving you very good image quality. If you start liking macro a lot, if you plan on uh, doing work with macro, if you plan on doing product photography, if you plan on using macro as part of your work, then you can definitely upgrade to better lenses because I'm not saying this is the best lens in the world. It's not, but it's a very good uh, starting point, which doesn't cost you a kidney and it's gonna teach you a lot of stuff when it comes to macro photography. Again, this is for Sony, but at the end of the day, there's no electronic. It's gonna get it's gonna get you the same result on Fuji, Nikon, any APS-C body, or even the Micro Four Thirds, which I think this lens is also available for. On top of that, 60 uh, millimeters is probably the best macro photography focal length for APS-C. It's your 90 millimeters on, on, on full frame because you don't have to be super close to the subject. You're not gonna scare your subject away. If you're doing insects and you have a 30 millimeters, you basically have to get like this and the insect is gonna run, run away. With this lens, you got this kind of minimum focusing distance, which is, uh, more useful, yes, it, uh, it involves less depth of field, so a little bit more stopping down. And if you get into macro, you're probably gonna buy specific flashes that are gonna help you light the scene in a proper way. But that's down in the, in the pipeline of pur purchasing. That's it for today. If you liked the video, leave me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel and you like the content, why don't you think about sub subscribing? I have a lot of uh, videos coming up in the next weeks. That's it for today. Bye. Ciao, ciao.